Praise God. All right, let's start reading here, starting at verse 23. Be glad in the children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God, which is out and which as, yeah, rejoice in the Lord your God, which has given the former rain moderately, and will come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. The floor shall be full of wheat, the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I'll restore to you the years the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God which has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Say, I will never be ashamed. <clears throat> and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Praise God in heaven. Okay. <clears throat> now this, today I want to do, I want to do just, just some solid teaching if I will. Because um, <clears throat> there are some things that I think that should have been accomplished now by the body of Christ that um, haven't been done yet. And I think it's, amen, it's, it's, because, it's because I think that uh, there are some pieces here that, that need to be supplied and, and that people need to be encouraged to not only hear this word, but what? Be a, be a doer of it as well. Okay. Um, I read you that the rain, and we said the rain symbolizes the anointing. And this anointing, symbolized by rain, is talking about the rains are coming. And when this anointing comes, this rain comes, the former rain and the latter rain, we said the former being outreach, the evangelism, and the latter rain being the beautifying of the church, which I'm not, uh, don't think I'm gonna have time to go into today. But this whole idea of the beautification of the church I'm going to be touching on some things which are related to that. And then he goes on down and says that um, my people will never be ashamed. That means that the rain is going to wash away the shame. Amen. And so now we come on down to verse 25. And it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Now, that's, of course, talked about something that Brother Keith talked about also, and this idea of empowerment, that something's coming on the church to empower the church, that the church can do or finish the work or whatever has been destined for the church to do, that this power is going to come on. Now, he talked about restoration. <clears throat> now, let's just say something first. <clears throat> Revelation brings restoration. Revelation brings restoration. Now, <clears throat> we talked about Revelation before, and I want to say a few things about that. Let's see what I put down here in my notes. But Revelation is key for us to be able to to do the things of God, because without revelation, uh, God said over in Genesis, Genesis chapter 13 and verse 14, he told Adam or Abraham to look to the north, south, east, and west. And he said, as far as you can see to thee, will I give it. And let's turn it up the other way. If you can't see it, you can't get it. So what is revealed to you is what God delivers to you. Well, I got to see it. And we went all over the Bible talking about that. Um, we talked about in John and um, Joshua, Joshua chapter six. And he said to him, see, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and so forth and so on. Now my point to you is is that if you want to go somewhere with God, you got to see it first. If you can't see it, he can't deliver it. 
This is the, the rules that he set up. And what happens when you get revelation? You were never designed to go places you can't see. Think about it. In here, somebody blindfolds you and, you know, you're trying to find an exit because you're not meant to go where you can't see. So the same thing about your spirit, spiritually, is that you should see things. And as God is giving you precious promises, these promises here, well, let's go over there. Let's go over to um, 2 Peter chapter, chapter uh, 1. In 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, uh, let's start here. I'll start verse, at verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, he says, uh, yeah, all right. He says, according to he has divine, his divine power is given to you, given to us all things um, at, that pertain to life and godliness. I'm, I'm reading out of verse 3. Uh, life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Let's break that down. Now let's just see what, what God is saying here. Now, <clears throat> this seeing it <clears throat> is revelation knowledge. And I showed you in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, that where there was no knowledge, people are still held in captivity. So if they can't see it, revelation knowledge, reveal knowledge. You see, let me just talk a minute. Adam fell from revelation to information. And, and that's what we're in. We're in the information age. And, and it's, 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 a, it's a level, but it's, it's a level that's functioning at the, at the three-dimensional level of humanity. And everything comes through logic, trial and error, reason, so forth and so on. But, but human reason, Satan has tried to use as a mortal enemy against faith. Because people try to reason out something, whatever it is. And the word, the word doesn't need any reasoning. You know, it, it's the word. You have to accept the word for what it is. And, and, um, <clears throat> For example, listen at this. He says in, uh, in, first, in, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now you know, and, and if you've been around any word of faith, that, that health also means medicine. Am I right about that? All right? So the word is medicine to all your flesh. See? Now, think about it. People down in the lower level are taking medicine. Med medicine for this, medicine for that, so forth and so on. But where did the medicine come from? Most of the medicine came from plants. Well, what made the plants? The Word. In the beginning was the what? The Word. Let there be trees. So why do I have to deal down here on a lower level where I've got an, an extract from a tree that hopefully will do something for my condition when I can go back to the source that made the tree. Uh, no, no, y'all got what I'm saying here. See, I, 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 they're doing the best they can, but it's called human wisdom. And the human wisdom is giving me side effects. Uh, y'all with me? 
it, it's, it's, it's giving me a lot of side effects here. And I, they're doing the best they can, but, but I'm taking this. And, and it says on the bottle, uh, may cause heart failure, may cause kidneys shut down, may cause that. But it's, it's the wisdom of men. I'm doing the best I can. But when you get in the word, it's going to take you back to the source. Say amen to that. All right. Now, so revelation rather than information. And so I got to get revelation. Now, what is he talked about in first, second Peter is precious promises because they are precious. They're for precious people. And so, um, you know, I'll just put something down here because I mentioned something the other day. I went to Deuteronomy. I think I went to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, but I'll start Deuteronomy. um, Let's see, Deuteronomy chapter six and verses 10 and 11. It talks about, I'll give you cities that you didn't build. Come on, and houses full of what? All good things that you didn't fill. Now, now notice, notice what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the promise. I'm going to give you the promise. Now, you take the promise. And that promise, once you take that promise and meditate it or make it so that that promise is believed, now you've got faith to act on that promise. And God, who promised it, is faithful to do it. Now, I, did I skip a step here? The way we got our house debt free is through the promise. The Lord said, buy that shopping mall. Well, that's huge shopping mall. <laughs> Whoa. He said, I'll give you a promise. And he gave me Joshua 1 8. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given to you. Are you with me? So what did I do with that promise? Well, I did the same thing the woman with the issue of blood did when she heard about Jesus. She began to say, if I can just touch, come on, his clothes, I shall be whole. And the Bible says in the Amplified, she continued to say. Now, what was she doing? She was tearing down an image that was built by the world and building the image that God has from heaven. And Lord have mercy. (laughs) Whoa, glory to God. I got to keep going here. Got to keep going. I got a ways to go. Here was a guy and he, he testified. He came to the ministry and he got born again. And then we had a business conference and he was sitting at the table with somebody who had um, a real estate business. And they started talking real estate. And he he said to himself, something quick in him said, hey, I I can do that too. I can do that real estate thing. And so what happened is he began to go forward trying to produce something uh, and get some, an apartment building and so forth. But the first place he went said, your credit is too bad to do anything. All right. So then he went to the Lord about it. And so a couple of days later, he went to his job at work and his coworker had just gotten promoted. So now she was moving her desk and moving all of her stuff out of her desk into an office or whatever have you. And something spoke to him, said, go help her. And he, you know, busy, I'm busy doing my work. Something said, go help her. So he obeyed God, went over there to help her. And as he was moving something off the desk, he saw a scripture. And he said, what is this? She said, that's the scripture I used to change my credit. (laughs) He said, well, give me that scripture. (laughs) Oh, did I introduce my wife? Wife, stand up. My wife, Veronica, stand up. Praise God so they can see you. 34 years. Praise God. Amen. I thought about credit. Uh, and, uh, and so, and, 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 and so 
I looked at this. <clears throat> and he went over to Colossians in chapter 2. Let's go over there. He went to Colossians chapter 2. And look what it says in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. <laughs> Everything in this earth that you will encounter or that you need is in the book. And if it's not in the book, you don't need it. He took that scripture and began to say it. He began to say it. And this guy told him, says, hey, uh, man, they don't change that credit. You know, every uh, six months, they'll look at it or one year or something, and they might change it then. He said his credit was not bad. It was zero. <laughs> he started confessing it, and something spoke to him, says, what level of credit do you want? He said, I want 750 or whatever that is. I don't, I don't know anything about credit because I don't need none. Um, so I don't, I don't even know what those, those numbers are. But, but he said, I don't buy anything on credit. So he said, he said, well, I want 750. And he started declaring 750. And they changed his credit. In 30 days, it went from zero to 750. <laughs> and he took it, I guess, and went out and bought an apartment building and so forth and so on. I mean, now I'm only saying something here. I'm saying there are precious promises for everybody in here. It doesn't make any difference what your situation is, what your dilemma is. He's got a promise here that will restore the years that, that everything, the canker worm, everything the devil has messed up in your life, every part of your body, everything in your marriage, everything with your kids, it doesn't make any difference. It's in the book. See, and this book represents the truth. I know the situation exists, but this truth is powerful enough to move, to change anything in this earth. Say amen to that. Amen. All right. Praise God. Okay. I'm still flowing. All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's keep going. I've got a couple of topics here I want to cover. So this idea of revelation. Now this is again, very, uh, very important for us. Um, let's go to, um, I, I, I'm, I'm skipping over some things. Let's go to Roma, let's go to Acts, Acts chapter 20, please. And verse 32, Acts 20 and verse 32. Acts 20 and verse 32. And he says this. <clears throat> He says, uh, and now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Now, I'm going to dip down into something here and I just want you to hold on because it's going to be good. It's going to be, it's right. It's, it's biblical. Sanctification. The first step to your sanctification was getting born again. I got born again. Now I'm separated from the world. I'm in it, but not of it. And I think I read the scriptures to you out of John chapter 17. Didn't I do that the last time? Okay. Now, I don't want to only get born again. But I want to get the born again life. I, I, want to, I want to live like born again folk supposed to live. 
I, 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 wanna, I want to live healed. Yes. Come on, I want to live rich. Yes. Now, I know some people just had, I felt a little dip in the anointing when I said that, but you better jump on board because it's in the book. Jesus, who was rich for our sake, became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. That's what the Bible says. So I don't care what your opinion is, drop that. I want to live without struggle. I want to live. It's a lot of ways I want to live. I want to live in peace. The kingdom of God is not in, in meat and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I want to live all those kind of ways. So I just don't want to be saved and not have all the other parts of my inheritance working in my life. I want to be saved and sanctified. Now, the first step was born again. That was an event. The next steps are progressive because now I'm getting myself together. Well, what's the problem? The problem was my soul because I'm going to prosper and be in health. Is this the right crowd? I'm going to prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. Third John 2. Am I right about that? So I've got to, I've, I, I've, I've, I don't want to be a broke Christian. Come on. I, I don't want to be a Christian that, that, that's, that's arguing, mad, uh, 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 hating my country. I, I don't want to be that kind of Christian because that's not the kind of Christian God made me to be. I think I took you to the scripture last time that God puts us in a country wherever he plants us. Did I take you, take you there? I didn't take you there. I didn't. I thought I did, didn't I? I did. Okay. Okay. Where were the rest of the people? Okay. <laughs> it's, it's over in Jeremiah and Jeremiah and chapter 29 and verse seven. And he said, and seek the peace of the city wherewith I have caused you to be carried away. See, wherever you are, seek the peace of that city. He said, their peace is going to be connected to your peace. But yet, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because you got certain people that trying, well, I, I, that's a whole nother thing. I, all right, okay. Let's see, where was I now? Okay. Um, I'm, 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 I'm dealing with sanctification here. I, 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 was, I was going somewhere and I, I got to stop being pulled off course. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, your, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go to Romans chapter 12. These scriptures that you know, but I'm bringing them back because there's something missing here. There, there, there needs to be a different culture that I'm seeing. I mean, I, I need to see when the pastor says, hey, God just gave me a vision for um, a family center and it's going to cost, um, you know, 20 $30 million and we need our congregation to give. Uh, can we open the, the floor and, and, and those who would like to give, um, could I ask for your, your own contribution? Uh, there's a hand over there. How much, sir? Uh, a, a million and a half. Okay. Uh, over here. How, how much, ma'am? Uh, two and a half. Okay. Uh, five million over here. Uh, okay, that took about a minute and a half. Thank you. We've got our money. Thank you. Let's, let's go ahead and open. Now, now, this is the way this thing's supposed to be happening. Brother Copeland said it. He said, the money should be there before you even get the vision. Oh, boy. Say saved and, saved and sanctified. Now, with this, so God takes us somewhere 
And he puts us in a place, and wherever he places us, we have the responsibility for it. We have to own up to the fact that we're responsible for the assignment that he gives us, whether it's a company, whether it's a city, whether it's a community, whether it's a family, whatever it is, a church, that we need to take some ownership. We need to take some stewardship over that that he's given us. Just stay here with me. Praise God. I'm going to get there. All right. Now, as you go in to those places, then you're coming in a little different from the folks that are in there already. And in Matthew's gospel and chapter 13, he says here, starting, glory to God, at, Lord have mercy, I got to get, I think I'm rushing too much. Starting at verse 31, and he says, and another parable he put forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man, uh, likened to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge under the branches thereof. Now, what is he saying here? That I'm going to plant you somewhere and when I plant you there, you're going to be obscure. In other words, nobody's going to know what you're all about. Nobody's going to know. It's kind of like having an old car with a new engine under it. It, 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 it. It's high performance, but it looks like the same body. And I'm saying you got now saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, empowered. Now I'm giving you an assignment. Now, in that assignment, you're going to come in under the radar. You're going to come in, and they're not going to notice you that much, but there's a power in you that's greater than anything that is in this world. And, and this anointing that's on you is going to raise you up so that you, Lord have mercy, so, so that you become a leader, glory to God, yeah. Wherever you are. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on. I've got to get it out. This, 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 this anointing that is on you is making it so that people will be able to see what heaven is like. And, and this anointing, oh, could you turn me loose, turn me loose now, Holy Ghost. I, I got to go, I got to teach this thing. This anointing that is on you will make it so that just as Joseph went down to Egypt and became second in command, Daniel went to Nebuchadnezzar and became head of the government. I'm saying the anointing that is on you is going to distinguish you. That anointing is going to raise you up. Now, the reason why I'm saying the anointing is because the, the anointing is going to do this. You, you're not going to do it. You, what you've got to do is have confidence in what's on you. You, you've got to have confidence in what's in you because greater is he, come on, help me, than you, than he that is in the world. Look what it says in Matthew's gospel, chapter 13 and verse 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he, he departed thence. And when he was coming to his own com, uh, country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Now, where I left off last time is that this that Jesus was talking about was the anointing that was on him causing him to have wisdom and mighty works. 
I'm saying something here. Lord Jesus, I'm saying this. Oh, Jesus. Let me, let me just start. Can y'all, can y'all bear with me? Pull it out. Pull it out. I, I got I to gotta say this thing. Over in John, John's gospel, chapter 14, he says this, and he said it in verse 10. He said, believe thee not, thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he's doing the work. Look at verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I'm going to the Father. Now, what is he saying here? He is saying that what I'm doing, you're going to be able to do. That's what, this is what Jesus said. Now, I saw what he did. He caused 5,000 people and women and children to be fed in the middle of nowhere. I saw what he did. He even went over here in Matthew's gospel, chapter 15, and healed the blind, healed the lame, and the maimed. And the ma I'm talking about, I'm talking about limbs growing out. What he did was he went to a grave site that a man was four days and stinking. And he said, roll away the stone. Even his disciples stepped back. Because I don't think they thought anything would happen. And they thought this might be the end of our ministry. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Now you hear what I'm telling you. He said what he did, we're going to do. Not only are we going to do this, but we're going to do greater works. Now, there are things that Jesus didn't do because he was limited in the scope of what his father had for him as an assignment in the earth. But he's saying, you're going to take up from where I left off. You're not going to only do what I did, but you're going to do more than I did. Say amen, somebody. Now, this anointing, it's key that you understand that this anointing is on you and in you, and you've got to have confidence in this anointing, and you've got to build your faith up by getting a revelation of that anointing, that when you step out on that anointing, that anointing will work for you just like it did for Jesus. Now, here, here's what happened to me. I went I was, we were in Minnesota and, and we were, had got saved and so forth and on fire for God and listened to people like Charles and Francis Hunter and so forth. You know, all of them with doing the, doing the back thing and all of that kind of stuff and seeing that healing. And I said, okay. So God said, have a healing meeting. So I went to the park, got permission, had a healing meeting in the park in Minnesota. We had a healing meeting in the park after I finished preaching. Then I said, come whoever would like to be healed, and so forth. And people start uh, coming. And this one lady came, and the other lady was with her, uh, the, uh, this lady, uh, oriental lady. And she said, uh, my friend can't feel her face. I said, okay. I said, come in, lady. I said, do you believe Jesus is a healer? She said, yes. I said, I'm going to lay my hands on you, and you're going to be healed in Jesus' name. I laid my hands on her. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And when I said that, I took my hand away. She said, I can feel my face. And she started crying. I can feel my face. And I said, lady, Jesus healed you. She said this, no, he didn't. I said, excuse me, you heal me. I said, whoa, 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 lady. Oh, hold on. Don't get me in no trouble here. I said, I said, I didn't do it. He did it. She said, no, he didn't. Now you remember the donkey that Jesus rode in Jerusalem on? Somebody told me that donkey went back to that stable that night and said, did you see all those people bowing down to me? 
Now, now you know what you call that kind of donkey. Now, my point to you is, <laughs> now, notice what I'm saying. The power that's in you. And that power that's in you is greater than anything outside of you. But that power needs your believing and your faith for it to function like God wants it to function. Say amen to this. Now, I put a couple of scriptures down here to just kind of let you separate the person from the anointing. Because this is, I, I know in the Old Testament, the anointing came on Saul. And Saul, the Bible says he's stood head and shoulders above everybody. This is in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And he thought he was all of that. Tall, dark, and handsome, I guess. <laughs> and so, now God moved him into his ministry. And in 1 Samuel chapter 10, it talks about everything the anointing did for him. First, it made him a captive, a captain. And the next thing it did, a captain means that it, he, he got a status of a ruler. And the next thing it did, it, it gave him a restoration. Things that were lost are now going to be found. This is the anointing. The next thing I did is it give him supernatural increase, meaning where it takes other people a year to do something, you can do it in a week. It, it, the next thing it did is talking about the anointing. The reason why it's doing all of this, because it's trying to paint a picture in you as to what's in you. Because you can have a billion dollars in the bank of New York and not know it and die without it. And I'm saying you got something in you that most many Christians don't know. Don't, they've heard about it. Don't know what the power is. The same power that was on Jesus. I'm, I'm here to tell you. The same anointing he put on his body. That same anointing that will heal the sick, that will heal the maimed, that will raise the dead, that will do all of these things, feed 5,000, that same anointing is on you and me. Yes. And, and the thing about it is we have to be taught that anointing and have to be taught how powerful that anointing is and have confidence in it, watch this, so we can step out on it. Yes. See, I had to step out on that anointing. I remember... Um, I was, I was confessing all these scriptures and so forth, and I went downtown to see a friend of mine, and I got downtown uh, to see him, and there was a commotion on the other side of the street, and, and I said, man, a commotion? And, and what's going on over there? And I, 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 I felt God was telling me to go over there to the man, but I, I just didn't want to go because it wasn't none of my business. And so what happened was I, I ended up having... Uh, uh, this man behind me look at me and I got kind of convicted and I said, well, let me go over there to the man. And so I stepped in the street to go over there to the man. Now this man was homeless and he was swinging at everybody. Now this is on La the South Street, which is like Wall Street in, Ch in New York. And it was on the South Street at noontime, people out. And so now this crowd is gathered, but God told me to go over there. Now I'm confessing, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm the head and not the tail. And you know all of this. Okay, so we're going to step out on this. And so what happened? When I hit that street, something shot off inside of me. Boom, it just went off inside. Next thing I know, I said, whoa, I feel invincible. I went on over there, across the street, and the guy was about 10, 15 paces in front of me. And he, 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 he must, the devil in him must have known Jesus was in me. And, and this, this is the way he did. This is the way he did. Just like that. Just like, now normally I'd have gone back across the street. But if that revelation takes hold in you, do you hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> I made my way towards him, and as I did, everybody was looking. Now, why are they looking? Because everybody's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Say amen to that. 
And as I got to him, he was a tall guy. I took him, and by the time I got to him, his gait had closed up and his shoulders had shrunk. And I put my arm around him. I said, my friends, what's your problem? He said, they stole my cigarettes. I said, that's all right. I said, come on with me. God, God confess, got, got him to confess Christ. I'm just saying, my job. Now, I'm only saying that I can go in this Bible and I can look at the anointing. Let's go to 2 Samuel, please, and chapter 6. 2 Samuel, chapter 6. Over in 2 Samuel, chapter 6. Lord have mercy, Jesus, I'm trying to beat this clock, man. 2 Samuel, chapter 6. Look, 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 <laughs> look what it says here. <laughs> look at verse 9. It says, And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him, unto the city of David. Praise God. But David carried it aside unto the house of Obedidim, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obedidim, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obedidim and all his household. Now, why, wait a minute. He pulled the ark in there. Now, what happened with the ark? It was anointed. Well, how do I know it was anointed? Because it just killed a man. Amen. Somebody just touched it who wasn't a priest and they got out of line and with, 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 with the, 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 the regulation of God and they died. Now, God wasn't trying to kill anybody. It's just they stepped across the line. Amen. Now, my point to you is, now David said, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, wait a minute, I don't think I'm going to take this thing much further. Hey, Obedidim, let me hide, let me take this and put it in your house. Put it in Obedidim's house. Watch this. Next thing Obedidim did, he prospered. He prospered with this ark in his house because of the anointing that was on the ark that was in his house that made him prosper. Say amen to that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be discouraged. I just go with me. Let's go to uh, also, sec ooh, Lord, here's one in 2 Samuel over here. I, I don't want to read this, but this is, well, uh, no, I'll, just, I'll just leave it here. Uh, it's where uh, uh, David's wife kind of laughed at him uh, because he was dancing, you know, and he just had on his, his bottom piece and she started laughing at him. Her womb got shut up. All right. <clears throat> I, like I said, I didn't want to read that, but <laughs> all right, let, let me, let me go just a little bit further. Just stay with me, saints. It's going to be all right. Let's go to, to numbers, numbers chapter 17, please. I'm going to have to let these notes go. I see that right now. Numbers chapter 17 over in numbers chapter 17. This is when they were disputing about who's going to be the leader. So what did Moses do? It says here in verse seven, and Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow, Moses went unto the tabernacle of witness and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and it brought forth buds. Watch this and bloomed. And what else? Blossomed. And what else? yielded fruit, yielded almonds. I'm just saying he took a stick, put it in the tabernacle where the anointing is, came back the next day, fruit were on the stick. Without the stick being stuck in soil, without any light, without any water, I'm talking about if the anointing is on your life. <clears throat> You're going to bring forth something and all the people around you saying, how did you do this? You didn't go to Harvard. You didn't have too much training. You didn't have this. You're going to say, it's the anointing of God that is on my life to bless you. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. So now, if you look at Jesus's life, it says here with Jesus, oh, Jesus, glory to God, help me on it, go, man, I know. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Let me let me let me go on over. Overflow. Overflow. Okay, let me go on over. I'm I'm just gonna preach. I'm just gonna preach. Because I see I ain't, I ain't making it this way. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. And there shall come a rod, this verse 1. Come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out, branches shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Next part of the next verse, and shall make him of quick understanding. If you look at these parts of the anointing, this is the way the anointing could manifest. And it names them, and out of all those seven names, four of them are mental. Are mental. Now he said, I wish, beloved, that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. A lot of times the church does not really, really think much about the soul. Because we've been taught spirit, 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 spirit. But God is not going to go around your soul. That your soul has something to do with the anointing coming in and through your life. God gave you a free will and he won't take it back. He could have come in the earth and knocked that fruit out of Eve's hands and put that down. That ain't good for you. But he didn't because he made her like him. She had a free will. And so Adam and Eve ate and lost their assignment, lost their provision, lost everything, including their mind. Now God has got to restore it. David said in Psalm 23 and verse three, he restoreth my soul. Say amen to this. So what Paul figured out, he said, wait a minute, true enough, you've got to be born again and that, but for God to work through you, your mind must be renewed. So the issue becomes your soul. Now, it says over in Jeremiah, also chapter 17, that the heart is desperately wicked who, know, who, who can know it. Now, that's not talking about your spirit. Once you get born again, your spirit is just as righteous as Jesus. I heard Brother Copeland preach one time, there's no such thing as spiritual defects. You know how a baby could be born with a defect sometime or a car can be put out? No, no such thing as that in your spirit. Your spirit is just as saved as Jesus. The problem is not the spirit. The problem is the soul. It includes your mind, will, emotions, intellect, and imagination. That's what contains your memory, so forth and so on. And that soul has got to be dealt with. And Paul found that out in this thing. He is saying, wait a minute, there has got to be a renewing, come on, of your mind. And what do you renew your mind with? You got to renew it with the Word of God. I got to get the Word of God and get the right picture in me of how God sees me. Other than that, I'm going to be looking at myself like people call me. See, I, I, I had to make up my mind, wait a minute, 
I, I know who I am. Amen. When I was about to buy that shopping mall uh, or church, they said, Pastor, they're not going to sell that to you because they, they, they're really, those pre people are prejudiced and they don't want no black man to have that. I said, who are you talking to? Amen. You see, you got, you got to understand, my skin may be a certain color, Amen. but I am a child of God. Amen. Now, now you, you, you got to hear me on this because, because, because I don't care how many names they call me. I, it doesn't make any difference. I'm still going to take your stuff. It, it doesn't make any difference. It, 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 now, you got to hear what I'm saying. See, see, you, you got a choice. You can receive it or reject it. And those people coming out of Egypt, didn't they say, we are in our own sight as who? grasshoppers, and so are we in their sight. Where did they get that image from? They got it from Egypt. They got it from being a slave and people talking down to them wouldn't let them look out the same window they looked out, wouldn't let them sit at the same table they sat at, wouldn't let them do this. But I'm telling you right now, we are free. That, this is your emancipation proclamation. And I'm saying right now, it's not just black people or brown people that's got a problem. It's white folks got it too. That all races see. And if we just, wait a minute, let's step up to who God says we are. Now, what I got to do, I just can't read it one time. I got to read it and somewhere I got to act like it. It's not a spiritual issue. It's, I think it's more than that. It's a soul issue. And that we've got to renew our minds to who God says we are. Folks, I don't know about you, but I'm on my way to the best that God has. Now, so Paul saw that. And in this anointing, He's, he talked about, let's go over to 1 Corinthians, please, and chapter, um, 1 Corinthians in chapter 2, please. Lord, have mercy. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Look what he says here. This is the apostle Paul. Lord, have mercy. Woo, there's so much I want to teach here. Boy, <clears throat> I'm not trying to get any more information. I need revelation. I need knowledge from another source. Because the knowledge from this source will lie to me. It will lie to me. So I'm going for knowledge from another source. That's what the apostle Paul did. And he now wrote half over the half, the new Testament and so forth. Look what he says here. Verse four. And my speech and my preaching are not in the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and the power that your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect and not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to north. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Watch this, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have what? Crucified the Lord of glory. See, Satan's got a wisdom. And he's teaching it to the world, to the people he wants. And if you end up with only that wisdom, you're going to have to compete with them. He didn't call you to compete. He told you to dominate. So I need a wisdom that's above human wisdom. I want to say amen here, somebody. And what happens is Christ. Look what it says over in 1 Corinthians and chapter 1 and verse 30. It says here, but of him, uh, is that chapter one? Yes, 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 chapter one. Are you all in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us what? Wisdom, keep going, 
Righteousness, keep going. Sanctification, come on. And redemption. Now, what am I saying? <clears throat> the wisdom that you have has been given to you by God <clears throat> so that you can fix the problems of the earth. And through that, God will have you being promoted. Oh boy, this is, I'm telling you, I, I shouldn't have gotten so much. John, uh, Josh, uh, Joseph. Oh, Lord Jesus. Can I, can I just take my time? Lord, have mercy. Let me slow down. For my spirit don't like to rush this thing. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Look at Joshua, oh, pardon me, look at Job, I bind you Satan, look at Job and chapter 32 and verse 8. And if you have it, put it up there on the screen, please, in the Amplified Translation, so I can see it, I have stopped dealing with the Bible. All right, Amplified Translation, Job chapter 32 and verse 8, in the Amplified Translation, please. Mm -hmm. But there is a vital force, a spirit of what? Intelligence in man, that the breath of the Almighty giveth men what? Understanding. Now, there's a spirit of intelligence that is in you, that is given to you to solve problems that go beyond human wisdom. Amen. Yes. Yes. There is no problem you can't solve. One more time. There is no problem you can't solve. If, if you say, I can't solve that, what will happen? You can't solve it. The anointing and the power won't go any further than what you allow the power to do. Now, I'm saying this only because we're talking about, that's okay, that's all right, we're gonna get there. Only because we're talking about you in the world, because God's gonna plant you into the world to promote you. Amen. And he's gonna promote you, and in promoting you, things that are in the world are gonna come to you. Let me, let me show you something, let me, let me show you something. Here is, let me talk, here is the Queen of Sheba, she comes to Solomon. Anybody remember that? Yes. All right? What does she bring with her? She brings what? Well. Wealth. You can't separate wealth from wisdom. That's true. That's true. That's true. You, you can't separate. He, Saul asked God, said, God, God, God said, what do you want, Saul? He said, give me wisdom. He said, for that, I'm going to give you riches and so forth and so on. Well, he couldn't help but do it because that is part of what wisdom does. Look at Psalms 104 and glory to God and verse 24. Psalm 104 and verse 24. I'm going to teach this if that's the last thing I do. You're going to stay here till I get it. Look what he says, verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom has thou made them all. Amen. The earth is full of thy riches. Amen. Now, what made wealth? Wisdom. <laughs> Wisdom made wealth. Look at Proverbs. Come on over to Proverbs and chapter three, please. Glory to God, I'm not sure what happened here. Proverbs chapter three. It's all right, say it's all right. It's all right. Proverbs chapter three. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Woo! All right, look at Proverbs chapter three. Let me know when you get this. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise Verse 13. Happy is the man that finds what? Wisdom. And the man that getteth what? Understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and what? The gain of, of fine gold. 
she is more precious than what? Than rubies. And all the things that can des- you can desire are not to be compared with her. Watch what happens with wisdom. Length of days are where? In her right hand and in her left hand, what? Riches and honor. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because the economy of a country is not its problem. Its problem is they lack wisdom. That's not only for a country, it's for your family. Now, where is that wisdom? It's in you. Where is it? It's tucked away. Well, how do I get to it? By faith. I got to be taught that that wisdom is loaded in me and that I've got to put a demand on that wisdom to get that wisdom to surface. Two places. Let's go. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. Let's go to Mark chapter five, please. please and then second Kings chapter four, Mark chapter five. All right. You know the story. Here's a woman. She had an issue of blood. How long did she have that issue of blood? 12 years. All right. Look what it says here. Now watch this. Check it out. This is verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and nothing was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his clothes for his garments. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. All right. Now, the, the, uh, the, the, the Amplified says she continued to say. Now, what happens when you continue to say? Faith cometh. Say faith cometh. Faith cometh. So when you continue to say a promise, faith cometh. Yeah. Yeah. Faith cometh by what? Yeah. Yeah. And hearing by what? The Word of God. So when I keep hearing the Word of God, faith is coming. Yeah. I said faith is coming. Yeah. And look, look what happened now. And it says here uh, in verse uh, 29, uh, am I right there? Yeah, verse 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing what was himself, that virtue had gone out of him, turned about the press and said, who touched my clothes? Uh-huh. Now, no, no, no. What went out of Jesus? Virtue. Come on, saints. What went out of Jesus? Uh, wait, power. Okay. What's another name for power? The anointing. So the anointing was on Jesus. He was going this way. She came up behind, touched him, and the anointing flowed. Now, what made the anointing flow? See, he goes on down in verse 34 and he said, daughter, thy what? Faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and behold of thy plague. Now, if I am anointed and I need that anointing to flow for the benefit of answering a power problem for my company or whatever have you, that anointing has every answer that I ever would ever need because that anointing is God. And that answer he will give me. And as I come back with the answer, all of a sudden that they're going to say, wow, this thing is something. Why? Because over in Mark, Matthew chapter 11, it says that the anointing has kids, meaning that you're, they're, they're, every time the anointing or wisdom is flowing, you'll have proof that it's working. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going too fast and too far. Let's go to 1 Kings, please. 1 Kings and chapter, what did I say? Chapter 4. 1 Kings chapter 4. Say, I'm with you. Say, I'm with you all the way. <laughs> all right? First, 1 Kings chapter 4. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 4, here comes a woman, and she comes to the man of God, said, Wait a minute. My husband is dead and he did fear the Lord. And now the creditors have come to take him to my two sons to be bondmen. What are you going to do about it? Now notice how she came to him. Now, who did she come to? She came to the prophet. What is, what is, is what, Lord Jesus, what is on the prophet? The anointing. All right, what does the anointing do? Remove burdens, come on, destroy yokes. So she made a demand 
on that anointing. And one of the reasons for the man of God is to make sure that you get blessed. This is not, this is not, okay. All right, so verse two, and Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what's in your house? She said, thou handmaid's not anything a house but a pot of, pot of oil. And he said, okay, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, of empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when you are come in, shut the door upon you and your sons and pour out into all those vessels and set aside that which is full. So she went from him and she shut the door upon her and her sons who brought her the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said, there's not a vessel more. And the oil stopped. Then she came to the man of God and said, now, okay, now what do I do with this? He said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and live you and your kids on the rest. <laughs> Glory to God in heaven. <laughs> she placed a demand on the anointing and got an answer that caused the burden of debt to be removed in her life in one day. In one day. I'm saying that the anointing that is in this house. You had seven days of the anointing. Man, you're, listen, listen. Oh, Jesus, come on, Holy Ghost. Praise God. Let's go to Romans chapter eight, please. Romans chapter eight. Put it up on the board, please. I ain't looking around at nothing else. Put it up on the board. Romans chapter eight, verse 11. Look what it says. That's all right, you're gonna get it. I said, you're gonna get it. Romans chapter eight, verse 11. If you don't have it, I'll put it up. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I'm gonna just throw this out there. If you don't believe it, just tough. All right, here, here's... All right, now watch this. Over in the book of Job, Job was assaulted by the devil. He destroyed him, destroyed his house, killed his kids, destroyed his business. Then he came after Job. And here's Job, and he's in such bad shape until his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Boy, that's love, ain't it? Why don't you curse God and die? And he said, verse 10 of chapter two, he said to her, you're speaking like a foolish woman. All right? All right, look what it says up here in verse 12. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voices and they wept. This is Job's friends. All right. Now what it says in some of the other translations, such as the good news, it says that they couldn't even recognize him, that he was beyond recognition. This is Job. He couldn't recognize him. Now, what happened? That's how badly the devil had destroyed him. Shame. But Job didn't stop believing God. He stayed with it. And I say that last time that when that furnace is heat up, heated up, the enemy wants you to bow. And what you got to do is stand steadfast on that word that God said that by his stripes, I am healed. God says he will restore the years 
that Satan has taken away in my life. This is word. You don't have to go over there, but the Bible says, even in Job chapter 13, he says, and starting reading at verse 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Now, I really believe that that was a prophetic word spoken about Jesus on the cross. But if you look at Isaiah, and I just stay with me, please. I see, that's why I said the church got to grow up, man. We, we got to be mature because this is revelation. Look what it says, in I, and you're going to get it. And look at Isaiah chapter 52, if you will. And Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 14. And many were astonished at thee. His visage was so marred more than any man. Who was that they were talking about right here? Jesus. So Jesus, look it up in other translations, you couldn't recognize him as a man. That's how much as Keith was talking about the Keith, he said he'd been beat and so forth. All the flesh pulled out of him, so forth, the eyes out, so forth and so on. All of that was missing. All things were missing in Job. You couldn't tell he was a man. But in Job chapter 42, God, God restored Job completely. Are y'all with me? Now, I want you to see this. Look at Romans chapter 8 again in verse 11. And look and see what that says again. Here's what he says. He says, oh, have mercy. He said, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, can't you see what he's saying? He is saying, wait, wait, wait a minute. Jesus, the anointing was that resurrection power raised up Jesus from the dead. If you, if you look in the Bible, you'll see that the stuff that they used to put on Jesus and put him in that tomb weighed about a hundred pounds because they got the formula from Egypt. It was embalming. But if you look at it, once they came to find Jesus, he wasn't there. Oh Lord Jesus, y'all stay with me. My point to you is when he showed up, he didn't have anything left but holes in his hand and a hole in his side just so the disciples could believe. But everything else was made whole. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the spirit in Jesus was healing the maimed. The spirit in Jesus was healing the sick. I'm talking about leprosy. I'm talking about a man who couldn't swap his arm out. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it out and it was made whole. Now, how did he do that? By the anointing. He is saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What was on me is now on you. <laughs> Folks, Jesus did not come as God Almighty. He came as a man anointed by God as the Messiah. Yes. I'm only saying he's got in him the same thing now you got in you. And you look at the last chapter of Job. Job was completely healed. Not only that, his family restored. Not only that, he got twice full what he got when the devil took it. I'm only saying something. Turn to 1 Thessalonians and chapter 5 and verse 23, please. Glory to God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Look what it says here. I'll, I'll get it. He says this, the very God of peace sanctify you what? Holy. It, that's not H-O-L-Y. That's holy. That means all throughout. Watch this. And pray God your whole what? Spirit, keep going. Soul, keep going. And body, keep going. Be preserved, keep going. Blameless, keep going. Unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice what he said. <laughs> Whatever's wrong with you, once you get born again, 
that's just the beginning of your restoration. <laughs> what is going to happen now is everything that Satan has done to you. Watch this. I'm going to remove all trace. You better hear what I'm saying. <clears throat> and if you look in the book of Revelations, he said, I make all things new. Wait, 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 wait. Let me help, let me help you. I make all new parts. <laughs> part that is needed in your body. God saw it before the foundation of the world. Oh, come on now. Come on. Are y'all here? This is why brother Copeland and all of them see something. They see the glory of God. The, they see, see the first level is faith. The next level is anointing. The next level is glory. He, they see uh, when God is going to sweep through and beautify the church. He's going to make, listen, folks, you, whatever you've been dealing with, this is the last meeting you're going to deal with. You're about to see healings on another level. I'm saying that you're going to be a witness. They're going to look at you and see what your God is really like. Everything is, that's broke going to be fixed. Everything that's missing is going to be replaced. Everything that's damaged is going to be here. I'm saying, do you believe this? I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Say amen. amen. And my people will never be ashamed. Amen. Folks, if you look in that Bible and look at Sarah and Abraham, God says your name is Abraham and you call her Sarah. And he did that. And the next thing you know in Genesis 20, no, Genesis 18 or 19, some angels came and told Abraham, this time, season next year, your wife is going to have a child. Watch this. Watch this. She heard it, and this is what she did. <laughs> God is about to do something with you that's going to make you laugh. Kiss broke goodbye because you'll never be broke another day in your life, and I decree. Sit down. So, what happened? Watch this in Genesis 20. Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, saw Sarah and grabbed her and took her into his harem as his concubine. Folks, she was 90 years old. Come on. She was not barely walking. Sarah 
was, was she? Your youth is about to be restored like the Eagles. I'm decreeing it. How many believe what I'm preaching? God is about to be replacing everything in your body that's not working right? <laughs> From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. People gonna be sitting in the back of you and hair gonna grow out of your head. They gonna see it grow up. Can I speak this thing? See, this is not an a usual meeting. This is a meeting that's going to do something to take the body of Christ to the next level. I'm telling you now, sit down. I know you got some doubters in here, but I'm not concerned about you. You're going from faith to faith. In Mark chapter three, here's what they did. They said, Jesus, they said, uh, your mama want to see you out there. He said, who is my mother? Who are my fathers? I'm just saying there are some people that you're with that you're going to find you can't hang no more. Come on, you got to move out. See, sometimes if you try to hang with folks that don't want to go anywhere, it causes friction. But you're going somewhere. And I said, just like they announced in 2 Kings chapter 7, he said, tomorrow, about the same time, it's going to be plenty and it's going to be cheap. I don't know, but I got a feeling somebody in here is about to go to a level. That's going to make you laugh. Sit down. Now, think about this. Think about this. You got more sense than you think you do. So after today's lesson, you know that inside of you is wisdom. Am I right about that? Knowledge and understanding. Am I right about that? So no longer are you going to run from problems. Say amen to that. You're going to run to them and decree you got the answer. Step out, step out, step out. And I'm saying to you right now, promotion. I hear it in my spirit. Promotion is on the horizon. I said promotion. I said promotion. See, the devil had tried to steal your promotion, but everything that's stolen is coming back. Sit down. I know my clock has gone off 50 times, hasn't it? What well, happened? Somebody turned it off, I guess. All right, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Do you believe what I preach today? Now this environment is ready for miracles. I said it's ready for miracles. I said it's ready for miracles. Now, I didn't preach about God's justice because that's found in Psalm 104, verse 13. If you put it on the board, please. He said this, glory to God. He watereth the hills. Psalm, and claim there is a, next verse, please. Glory to God. He, no, Psalm 105, verse 14, praise God. (laughs) It's coming. I said it's coming. He said this, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he removed kings, reproved kings for their sakes. Watch this. Saying, touch. I said, touch. I said, touch. My anointed and what? Put up Isaiah, please. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. Now listen, this is not just another meeting. This is an impartation session. I said, this is an impartation session. I want you to receive. I said, you receive. In the name of Jesus, you receive. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment shall be condemned. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Now I'm telling you, put that same scripture up in the message translation. Just pop the message translation up there, if you will. Quickly, praise God. Look what it says. Just put it up there. It'll, it'll find its way. Just put the message translation. <laughs> come on. Come on, please. Glory to God. Oh, I don't have time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just put message on, same scripture, same uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 54, please. In the message, do you have the message? Don't have the message? Afflicted city, storm battered, unpitied. I am about to rebuild you with stones of turquoise and lay your foundations with sapphires. Construct your towers with rubies your gates with jewels, and all your walls with precious stones. All your children will have God for their teacher. What a mentor for your children. You'll be built solid, grounded in righteousness, far from any trouble. Come on. Nothing to fear, far from terror. It won't even come close. If anyone attacks you, don't for a moment suppose that I sent them. And if any should attack, nothing will come of it. I create the blacksmith who fires up the forge and makes the weapon designed to kill. I also created the destroyer, but no weapon that can hurt you who has ever been forged. Any accuser who takes you to court will be dismissed as a liar. This is what you, the servants of the Lord, can expect. Now you give God some praise because that's your destiny. I'm here to tell you that your days of being harassed are over. I'm here to tell you 
that whatever you've been going through, this is the last night you're going through. I'm here to tell you, and I'm going to speak it, I speak millionaires and billionaires in this place right now. I speak it in the name of Jesus. This is your season. You will not miss it. I said you will not miss it. You have the mind of Christ. You have the wisdom of God. And you're on your way to the, to the top. Come on, give God a shout. Give God a praise. Him because these are the end of days. God bless you. Come on, give him a shout in the crowd.